Now is our time for prayer. Prayers for comfort and peace for the Jane Smith family. Jane passed away unexpectedly a week ago. Prayers for the grandson of John and Irene, friends from Montana, who was at Mayo with a stat infection in his heart and lung. Prayers for all of us this day, for our families, for our friends. Would you please pray with me? For the ministries of this church and all who work towards our common vision of a uniting and uniting church, uniting God, receive our prayers and in your love answer. For faithful disciples in our United Church of Christ who work towards our common purpose of extravagant welcome, proclaiming the gospel and mending God's world, Uniting God, receive our prayers, and in your love, answer. For the dreamers, for the teachers, and prophets who share our common longing to be one in Christ with creation and with each other, uniting God, receive our prayers. And in your love, answer. For those around the world who work towards our sacred message of justice and peace and harmony, uniting God, receive our prayers. And in your love, answer. For the prayers we name to you now in the silence of our hearts. Receive our prayers, and in your love, answer. Amen. Our denominational branches of the UCC have strong individualistic tendencies running throughout. Tell me about it. <laughs> Speaking of strong individualism, like hurting cats, <clears throat> How did Congregationalists come to be, anyway? I thought you'd never ask. People are coming to the New World in droves. Congregationalist pilgrims began their journeys because after Queen Elizabeth's equanimity toward the Protestant movement came the very harsh views of King James I. He didn't believe he could rule England unless he had a unified Anglican Church of England, which meant no other Protestants. As he said, no bishop, no king. It wasn't so bad for the Puritans, but the Pilgrims were in dire trouble. Wait a second. What's the difference between Puritans and Pilgrims? They were both Congregationalists, weren't they? Yes, they both used the Congregational forms of self-governance. But while the Pilgrims were Separatists, the Puritans were non-separating Congregationalists. They believed that the Church of England was the one true Church, and they were loyal to England but not in the way they worshiped. So it was the separatist church of pilgrims who had already escaped England in Leyden, Netherlands. And that is where Reverend John Robinson famous, famously sent a portion of his congregation to join the Mayflower's famous trip to America. Exactly. But they, but they before they left, he preached this. I charge you before God with his blessed angels that you follow me no further than you have seen me follow Christ. If God reveal anything to you by any other instrument of his, be as ready to receive it as you were to receive any truth from my ministry. For I am very persuaded the Lord hath more truth and light yet to break forth from his holy word. The Lutherans cannot be drawn to go beyond what Luther saw. Whatever part of his will our God has revealed to Calvin, they, the Lutherans, will rather die than embrace it. And the Calvinists, you see, 
stick fast where they were left by that great man of God who saw not all things. So it is written in the Congregationalist DNA is their tendency to continually review, question, and refresh their belief. So, if you find yourself continually wanting to update and refresh your faith, then you probably have a bit of that old congregational DNA in you. The same people who hunted witches in Salem became the same people who helped form the separatist, self-governing, revolutionary spirit in America. God is still speaking. We were transformed, and we will continue to be transforming as Congregationalists. Over a hundred years later, when Pietism came to the Americas, these same Congregationalists were energized by the First Great Awakening. Congregational Seminary, Yale College, produced many of the new spirit-filled preachers like Jonathan Edwards, breathing new life into our churches. Emotions ran high, and spiritual climates that had in many communities fallen into despair were transformed. However, Jonathan Edwards was responsible for a far broader synthesis of science, philosophy, and religion. He integrated with Reformed theology the worldwide view of Isaac Newton, John Locke's emphasis upon human experience, Augustine's spiritual enlightenment, and the Neoplatonic ideas of emanation, from the divine intellect to the soul, thus giving life to a New England theology. They would check the anti-intellectual tendencies and continually insisted on a separation of church and state. Okay, I guess I can see how much the Congregational Pilgrims helped to form many of the ideas for our own Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. But there's one more root of our United Church of Christ that you haven't mentioned. Well, that's probably because you preached on it just two weeks ago, so uh, Why don't you give us a refresher? Okay, here we go. Whereas the con Congregational American churches were being energized by the First Great Awakening, the Christian denominational movement occurred in the Second Great Awakening after the Revolutionary War. Many church members of English Methodism, Scottish Presbyterianism, along with English Baptists, wanted their own American ministers. Imagine that. They'd been under the Tory heel long enough and wanted to grow their own spiritual relationship with God in an American way. So this is primarily an American denomination. Yes, it was the first fully American denomination. They selected clergy from their own congregations and began preaching with enthusiasm, emotion, and appeal to the supernatural. They led many of the reform movements designed to heal the evils of society, leading towards temperance, abolition of slavery, and women's rights. The American spirit allowed for many forms of Christianity and humanity. One of our favorite American hymns comes from the Shaker tradition, "'Tis a gift to be simple." Since the Shakers were iconoclastic, they didn't like instruments in their worship. They sang a cappella. So, in that vein, if you would join me, I will begin us, and you have the words in your bulletin. You know the tune of this song. We'll sing it together. Ready? Tis a gift to be simple, tis a gift to be free, tis a gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, it will be. Spread your reign throughout all creation. 
Let us give with our hearts. Oh boy, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Not yet? Okay, thank you. All right, it's protection. Okay.